This here is my apple tree. Three apples are left. First year of fruit. They're pretty big, decent apples. So we're gonna pick these before something goes bad with them. They're the Galo variety. <clears throat> what I did here is I air layered this branch. <clears throat> Bring the hose right away, there's ants. Ants get in there, which is bad. I'll trade you. Get in here close. Film this. So there's ants in here. We're gonna just rinse them down. We're gonna take this off of here. This is called air layering. I'll put some new foil on here, maybe. I'm just checking this for moisture. This is saran wrap I put on here with a good handful of dirt with potting soil inside. You see the roots growing? Can you all see that? See the roots growing in there? And this tree's off that high off the ground. Now what I'm doing is I'm making a true tree that's already gonna get fruit. You just saw me. You just saw me pick the apples off of that tree. <clears throat> right off of this branch. So now, I'm not ready yet. I gotta have more time than I have this morning to dig a hole. But I wanna keep those roots, give them some water. Okay. Ants are all running up this branch. We're gonna just round them down. So anyway, the way you, you do this is you take a piece of a branch like this, ants again, and you look for a node like this, and you work around that. Now, you would cut this here, just enough to take the bark off down to the white wood. You ring it here, you ring it here, slit it through the middle, and you peel that bark off like a rind if you would. And then... You scratch it up a little bit with the razor knife or your knife that you're using until you see a few little hair fibers coming out around that wood, white wood underneath. And then you can buy rooting hormone at um, Lowe's or Home Depot or on, on the internet if you want. And you take that powder with your finger out of the jar and you rub that powder around there. And you can use anything that holds moisture, potting soil, peat moss, whatever you like. And then you wrap that in saran wrap. And I tied it with baling twine on each end. You can use whatever you have. I see people cut up in water bottles and put them on there to hold the dirt, which probably is better than a saran wrap, but this is working. You wanna hold that moisture in. Then the next step is you wrap this with foil. The reason why is because it molds very well and helps keep the moisture in. You can open it if you're careful and check it like I did most of the time and put it back in. I twist it when I tighten it like a motorcycle throttle and hold the middle part so I don't spin the dirt too much. All right, and now that's dark so that the tree thinks that's underground. Now you see how it grew that root ball. Now the next step is I gotta figure out where I'm gonna plant it on my little property here. And then I'm gonna saw this off here, down at the bottom here. And I'm gonna plant it up to about here in the ground. Maybe I'll whack these two branches off and come up a little higher. And I'm gonna put some good potting soil type compost and fertilizer in the hole when I bury it because I got dry soil here. It's very sandy along the river. Now next year, this will be a small apple tree that will give me fruit. Now the reason I originally started looking into this is because I bought that cherry tree there 
last fall I planted it and this year I got cherries on it. I said, how do they get a fruit tree to give fruit like that in the first year at a small level? Well, that's what they probably did. They probably air layered that off of a bigger tree. Now, if you have say a hundred year old orchard and you take a branch off a hundred year old tree, you're reproducing a genetic clone of that hundred year old tree. It's an identical match without grafting. It's an identical match. Grafting has DNA from the tree that you're grafting it onto. This tree has no other DNA but the one it's made out of. And then uh, 